Hi, good morning, it's Mark from PowerSonic. Uh, it's a bit of a, a day in the life video for a commercial um, situation. So for this one, we've actually started off on a different job for this particular client, but they've had an emergency pop-up over on another site where um, they've lost a three-phase supply to several units. So um, I cover what's actually happening with that, uh, how we rectify the problem, and um, report on that to the client as well, because it's all important that you know they're keeping that line of communication open. So we see a lot of videos on YouTube where we're working in domestic premises and um, going around doing day-to-day -day domestic work. And I thought this one might be a little bit different and hopefully prove interesting to people to show how it works in the commercial world. And one of the key aspects of that is accountability and clear communication with the client. So um, making sure that the chain is always in place. So when you are reporting an issue, and quoting it that there's a there's a route there for them to action that quickly especially in a scenario like this one um, so we've got a, a three-phase supply where the meat is actually set on fire to one of the particular units it's obviously gone with a cataclysmic bang because it's taken out the protective mccb for that particular unit but also the main switch on the panel board um, so it's obviously been quite a large surging current when when that faults occurred and the meter itself, as I explain later on in this, this video, is shorted across all phases and the neutral. So it's obviously gone with a right old pop and um, yeah, caused a bit of a mess. And obviously when you're coming into a situation like that, safety is always paramount. So in this instance, we made sure we've performed safe isolation. Um, you always make sure you're working dead before you become dead. Um, it's it's not yourself who has to deal with the fallout in most cases from things like that, it's other people. If you haven't seen it already, go and Google Louise Taggart and watch a story about her brother Michael. And if you ever worked live before, you will never work live again after seeing that. Um, and in this video, I don't actually lock off the main switch um, because the room adjacent actually has um, protective equipment for the room I'm working in and it's locked off in there anyway. But even if it wasn't, I'm right next to the main switch. I never leave that particular work area. I'm the only person in and around there. I'm happy it's safe and isolated and uh, the application of, of a lock wasn't really needed in that instance. Um, if you are ever working in a situation where you're gonna be remote from the point of isolation, always, always lock off. Um, that's just a, a given, you should be doing that. So you won't see in my content any videos that explain safe isolation or how you do lock off devices. I'll just talk about it because if you don't know how to do it, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, never work live and always make sure you're under the supervision of so someone who's skilled and competent um, in your first few attempts in doing so. So that was my little thoughts on that one. So yeah, hit to the video. Um, it just covers again, swapping out a three phase meter and some MCCBs and then making sure that the installation is safe to be re-energized and explain some of the practices we use in reporting on that to the client and um, yeah, I hope you find it interesting. Just a different one really in the commercial sector. Please like and subscribe to the videos. Um, it's really important to try and build up this channel if I can, that's what I'm wanting to do. Uh, cover a bit more of Apprentice One to One, some of the activities we do. We are unique in a way that we work across domestic, industrial, commercial, agricultural. We have sites installing, testing and inspecting on everything and everywhere. So there'll be all sorts coming up over the next um, several videos. And yeah, enjoy, thank you. Hi, welcome back. This is Mark from PowerSonic. Um, we've just been called out to a job on a, an industrial park. It's for a client that we do a lot of work for and they've had a whole row of units lose power. And I thought this is something that perhaps isn't shown very often on YouTube. A lot of it sort of seems to be in domestic environments. So I thought I'd put this video up and hopefully you're all going to enjoy it today. And the report was no power to any of the unit. And as you'll see, all the meters are off and um, the main panel is tripped and also the power to unit 20 which appears to be the one that's caused the issue because unit 20's meter was blown off the wall <laughs> so all this was, was chucked on the floor it's obviously had some form of overheating going on inside it look there you can see where there's been signs of burning uh, obviously we're all isolated now so we're, we're safe um, so yeah, we're going to have a little investigation of this one and see exactly what's going on. Try and fault find. So you can see the actual metered connections seem to be in reasonable order. It looks to be a problem with the electronics in this meter. So obviously we're going to go down and have a look in unit 20. 
whether I can get any footage in there or not remains to be seen. And we'll have a look inside this, this bad boy here as well. Make sure everything's in order, take a few test readings and uh, go from there. We do actually have a three phase meter on the van. So if it is just a case of a dicky meter upsetting things and um, we'll get straightened out, but I'll pop back onto the video in a little bit and um, talk some more. So welcome back. Uh, I've just sent Matthew off, he's on site as well. Um, brought the two of us over just in case we had a bigger problem than this. But um, he's gone off to look into Unit 20 now just to make sure there's no problems inside there. He's run off with a test set, so I've been left to have a look at this lot. And you can see here now I've actually got the meter apart. Excuse the bad lighting, we're just running off torches. That it's got a bit crispy in there. Um, you know, it seems to be from the outside. We've lost a connection that's blown off. Um, and obviously that started smouldering. And it's actually internally shorted across all the phases. So you can certainly see why um, we've had that had that happen and um, it's tripped off if I pin us around tripped off the unit 20 so this is all open and isolated now and um, at the same time that inrush of current has obviously taken the main switch out so we're just going to run through some tests in here as well make sure we've got no dead shots anywhere in the cable in some insulation resistance tests make sure that all of the um, phases and neutral voltages are correct and present um, get this meter swapped over to a nice new three phase meter and um, see where we stand at that point. As I said, Matthew's gone down to unit 20 now just to make sure that the um, wiring inside there is all hunky dory. Obviously, I'm pretty confident that it is just an issue with this particular meter. Uh, it happens here and there from time to time where they um, don't like things and get upset, and this is why you have to have devices. So, if you do get an issue, power's going off. Quite rightly, the site maintenance guys come to site and refuse to re energize anything. Obviously, he could have just turned that unit 20 off and banged the main switch back on. Um, I'm pleased in a way he didn't do that, not just for his own safety, but also because now I don't have to go around annoying everybody turning the power off in all the other units. Because I know what would have happened, they would have been making us wait until after they'd shut. So we can get on with this and um, be everyone's hero. So I'll drop back in shortly and show you the finished article, and um, hopefully we've got the power back on everywhere. Catch you in a bit. Hi, right, back on again. So I um, managed to strip the meter out now. There was supposed to be some... Um, three phase meters in the van turns out a single phase <laughs> so Matthew's just nipped off to go and get us a three phase one there's um, a wholesaler about 20 minutes away who's got stock on shelf so he's just nipped off to get that I spin them um, you can see we've got the the cables out the meter we're all still fully switched off obviously it's all under my control I'm right next to it I'm not leaving the room so I haven't blocked it uh, normally, if obviously I was here on my own and I was leaving this, it would be getting locked off. Um, but I'm stood right next to it, I'm not going anywhere. I'm happy with that as it is. And not only that, but the actual supply into the room itself from the another switch room just next door is also off. So we haven't even got any power in here at all at present. Um, got the old test set down here, so I'm going to fire that up and just do some dead tests on all of this cabling and make sure everything's as it should be. I'm not expecting to any problems. Um, Matthew's been down in unit 20, not that that means anything to you guys. And um, he's checked through there. He came back telling me there's a dead shot between L1 and F. And uh, a look of terror on his face because um, he thought we had a cable in fault and we were going to be here all night. But that was just that. I had left these touching the trunk in. Um, I knew straight away that that's what it was as soon as he said it, but I made him sweat for about a couple of minutes because that's the nice thing to do on a Friday at four. Well, it's not four o'clock actually, what time are we on? Quarter past two. Um, I think we were going to be dragging in some nice big steel wire our, cam uh, steel wire our cables um, down all these units for the rest of the evening and into tomorrow morning. Um, but I'm not that mean, so he's zipped off now to go and get this meter. We'll get it banged on and then hopefully if all the test results come back good, get the power back on and I'll drop on and show you it all finished up and put back together. So I hope this video has been of some interest so far, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll touch back with you in a bit. Hi, so we're back, powered up. Um, it was just the three-phase meter in the end that was causing the problem. Um, it's had an electronics failure internally. Um, it has taken out the, um, it's, a, it's a 40 amp MCCB on the distribution circuit related to it, and it's also taken out the main switch, so it's gone with an almighty clatter when it's finally um, given out. Obviously the selectivity hasn't worked there, 
Uh, that's something that perhaps needs looking at in the design. But I guess if, if it appears to be shorted between all phases and neutral, I mean, that fire inside, um, I'll, I'll actually put a picture up following this video or perhaps drop it in here if I'm clever enough with the editing so you can have a look. Um, it's taken it with an almighty clatter and bang, turned the power off to all of the other units. And uh, like I said, the actual um, service engineer, if you like, who came out, he's just a maintenance man. He could have so easily put the power back onto everything else and left unit 20 off. But I'm pleased he didn't because we would have been waiting until it was dark and everyone's gone home. So they would have let us turn the power off everywhere else. And likewise, he doesn't know who's introducing a fault somewhere else in doing so. It could have been something much more serious. He's done the right thing because he's seen something's been on fire and um, waited for the electricians to come and have a look. Uh, the main supply head in the room next door is all in good nick, all fine. Um, all of the other isolators uh, before this particular point are all fine. We've tested all of the wiring to the submains in each individual unit. That's all reading out fine. Obviously, we can't go to the point of doing any ICR on every single unit, but there's been no operation of protective devices in any of the units themselves. And, um, yeah, there's obviously strong evidence that this is the culprit. And, um, yeah, we'll just go around and do some live testing now inside the um, units we can get into, make sure we're all hunky-dory, and as usual, the data guys have phoned it up and asked if we can have a look at their server racks before we leave site to save them coming out. So, yeah, it's always us guys who get the crap in it. So we'll do that as well before we go. Um, I will do a, a little outro and intro video to all of this, and I hope it's proved um, um, useful, actually, because I haven't shown you the new meter. So we've got that one on there. See, everything's... Uh, happy as Larry I need to get the trunking lid back on that's down there so it's going back on it's not been left like that this is all back enclosed now and as you can see the power's back on everywhere so all the breakers are on and um, yeah I mean this this could do with some attention I don't know quite what's happened there obviously that needs some sorting out but um, responsibility for today on that one I'll just report it on the job sheet so what I would say is anybody who's doing these kind of works is make sure you photograph everything before and after document the back end out of the whole lot um, you want your ass covered you want all your test results you want to make sure everything's in order um, because there's been an electrical fire and um, you need to make sure that what you're re-energizing is safe and that there's pictured evidence of everything you've done that's time stamped so we use um, Service Mate now. I said in another, another video that um, Neil Bridgman put me onto that. So thanks, Neil. And that's helping us collate all of this. And the clients um, had the photographic evidence through within minutes. They've approved the work. Obviously, they need to get the power back on to all of their uh, occupants here. So that was a, it was always going to happen. I could have charged what I like at the end of the day. But, you know, we've, um, we're always reasonable and not taking the mick. And, uh, yeah, that helps with all of that. So there's a paper trail to the whole thing. Now I can do my job sheet and report. I might even put a little shot of that up on the screen as well so you can see exactly what I've documented aside from the electrical um, certificates we have to fill in as standard anyway. Um, and yeah, it's just that extra bit of assurance for the client that works have been done in the way that we've said. Everything's been left safe and if there's any issues further down the line, we can stand by everything we've done today. So yeah, if you're not doing that at the minute and you're simply turning up and uh, so we could have turned up here, chucked another three phase meter at the wall yep powers on walked away and then perhaps next week the meter next to it's set on fire and there's question marks of us and what we actually did today um, and now we can document and prove all of that so yeah thanks for watching hi good evening welcome back uh, we've just finished up on that job now um, and all the power's restored customers happy it's always one of the perks of the job when um, you get to be the the hero who puts the power back on I gave Matthew that glory of going around all of the um, units and, and explaining to the um, occupants what's happened and um, how we've rectified the problem within uh, a couple of hours. So this is a commercial client of ours who we cover a lot of sites for them around the country and um, we was actually on another job of theirs uh, a couple of hours away and we was asked to, to jump off that obviously because they've had a, an industrial block and lose its power. Uh, there's six units within that particular block. They're all like workshop units, uh, roller doors and three-phase equipment inside them all. Um, all of the data and internet had gone off because the switch room was just in, in the adjacent room to where we were recording. Um, so it was quite urgent. Obviously, we turned up on site, um, had a good look through the actual issue, and then not just gone down the, the road of chucking a new meter in and banging the power back on, we've actually ensured that the unit supplied by that meter's had a thorough test and check and we've made sure that that's all safe and fine. Uh, likewise, we've looked at the submains into the other units as well. Obviously, we didn't have time to do 
for the ICI and all of those and, and to be honest it wasn't really warranted or necessary in that situation. So yeah I'm happy with it, the paperwork's all complete, as I've said we use my service mate, um, so that's that's all been taken care of. We produced a quote with um, photographs again so we can explain to the client exactly which equipment has failed and the reason it's failed. Um, link that into pricing that we've got that's set so they can see that there's no um, underhand behaviour there and the labour rates are appropriate for what's needed. Um, the client then can then decide whether to action it or not and in this instance they have because if they hadn't then they're going to have six very agitated um, occupants I suppose. So this was one where we could have frankly quoted whatever we liked I think. Um, we don't, we just price as we would always price. But um, yeah that was approved through the My Service um, A app, so that's all been taken care of by a paper trail. Uh, we've then completed the work, replaced all of the faulty components, re-photographed everything with test results and test sheets, sent that on to the client, and that's all done within minutes, so they've got all that information straight away to hand. Um, they've got the um, knowledge that the site's been made safe, that the electricity is now back on to the occupants and that we've actually remained on site and helped the data guys out so they were supposed to send some some guys out to make sure that the data all came back on but as we were on site and it was just a case of making sure all the switches powered back up and um, it was connected they can remotely monitor it and, and make sure that's all in order so they did that as well and um, just an extra little bit of service and now with that particular client it's just strengthened that relationship we've got with them even further so they know when their back's against the wall they can rely on us to come through and help them so perhaps when there's um, a situation in the future we're going to be the first name on the list for pricing jobs and uh, hopefully getting those approved for works to be complete so that's just part of what it's like in the commercial sector when you're dealing with clients like that um, we, we cover all industries and certainly with um, domestic it can get a bit samey uh, with commercial you never know quite what you're going to come across so for example this morning we were installing data points um, over at another site and um, then this afternoon changing three phase meters and messing around inside distribution boards. Uh, so yeah it's quite varied, you've always got to work safe so we make sure we follow safe isolation procedures at all time and that everything is kept um, totally safe. You want to get bit once in those kind of scenarios and you don't want it to happen ever so I will always say make sure you're working dead before you become dead and um, yeah make sure you're always isolating correctly. I'm not going to show any safe isolation procedures on any of my content or channels because if you don't know you shouldn't be doing it and um, that's just my thoughts on it. So I hope you enjoyed this video anyway and um, please like and subscribe, pass a comment if you've got anything to add and I'll keep the content coming whether you're finding it interesting or not so it's going to keep rolling. Have a good one.